today we are going to look at uh, modeling of uh, positive feedback systems in detail and the underlying behavior. So, the positive feedback system or a reinforcing type of systems, the variable will continue to feedback onto itself and will reinforce its own growth or collapse. Examples uh, with arms race, you can see the threat perceived by uh, nation B will drive the weapons of nation B, which then affects the threat perceived by nation A, which then drives up the weapons of nation A. So, this entire loop is a positive feedback system which continuously reinforces itself and uh, which in popular literature is also known as the arms race. A more simpler example uh, could be the population growth, where if the net birth rate is positive, then the, we expect the population to grow. So, here the population will not grow linearly because whenever there is more births, it increases the population, and after some time, the that increased population will contribute to further increase to the uh, higher birth rates, right. So, this is going to continuously feed itself and will result in a uh, exponential growth of the variable population. So, the characteristic behavior I think we saw it last time also it is an exponential growth, uh, but to get a more realistic feel of what is it that we are looking at uh, because it is not perceivable in the short run we need to give it some time. So, consider a paper thickness 0.1 mm, we fold it in half then we again fold it, how thick will it be? It should be 0.4 mm, then we fold it in half it becomes 0 0.2, then we fold it again then it becomes 0 0.4. So, with every fold it doubles right there, how thick will it be if we fold it 42 times or 100 times, imagine the paper is big enough, any ordinary piece of paper probably not more than 7 times you can actually fold it. But imagine if you can actually end up doing it just 42 times, they are just 2 times, 3 times, it is not a really infinite number of times you are folding it, just countably finite number of 42 times. Uh, to do the math, that is more than 400,000 kilometers. Kilometers, you just change the units from millimeters to kilometers, 400,000, which is more than distance from here to the moon. So, that is how big an exponential can grow without if it is left unchecked. Uh, so, this exponential growth that we just saw characterizes most of the positive feedback system, the other one is characterized by accelerated decay or exponential decay. So, with time initially when it seems like you know systems is going fine, but after some time you can find that there is exponential growth that has occurred. So, positive. feedback or reinforcing systems what we are looking at is net flow rate affecting your stock So, this is a positive feedback loop or a reinforcing loop, a plus or r can denote it. And the characterizing characteristic behavior could be exponential growth. What are the variable of interest? Let us assume it is a stock. So, this is your exponential growth. Other part is uh, accelerated decay. Or exponential collapse. 
x x is always time. How will the shape of this be? Accelerated decay or exponential collapse. We have uh, how many options? Do we want to? Is it going to be this way? Or okay, of course, this is growth. What other options we have? It is going to be this way. This is an accelerated collapse. Since very less quantity seems to get down, if this is does not increase, it is actually flat. This part in the diagram, but after some time, it just after crossing point, it just starts collapsing faster and faster before it hits 0. The example I uh, illustrated was uh, panic selling in stock markets or panic buying. Not panic buying, panic selling. Nobody buys in panic. Why people sell in panic? Panic selling or uh, withdrawing cash from the banks. Uh, just a message that the bank is running dry of cash is enough for people to start queuing up. Initially, they get less and less amount, then suddenly you are faced with riot scenarios. Uh, so, that we characterize as a exponential collapse in the system. So, there is a what characterizes these two is while system is here or even system is here, it seems that things are all fine, but then if the same amount of time you wait suddenly the system becomes at unmanageable size. So, up to here things are ok and then you just waited a little longer and the system becomes unmanageable or here it was fine till here and then you waited a little longer and now system becomes unmanageable size which is here which you did not want. So, that is a characteristic behavior of exponential system. So, that thing seems to be ok, but uh, the growth is being unchecked within the system. Now, to model this as our stock flow diagram, let us see how we are uh, going to go about doing that. Let us see look at the SFD uh, representation or model. There is a stock, so it is a rectangle, and there is a net flow rate, net flow or net inflow. And we see that the stock again feeds back into your net flow rate. So, I have to represent that the positive sign. So, the top causal link is represented by this thick arrow with a valve, the bottom causal link is represented by an explicit causal link in your stock flow diagram. And to now capture the relation between the net inflow versus stock, let us introduce a new variable called as fractional growth rate. Let us have the this is G that has let us define the stock as just a variable S for uh, simplicity. So, the underlying equations here since stock would be given as change in stock or d t is nothing but net inflow that is d s by d t my net inflow let me just simply define as g multiplied by stock s as I told g is a fractional growth rate. So, units can be fraction per time, uh, the stock units are just simply units, that inflow rate becomes uh, just units per time. So, this the simple equation that is underlying this uh, diagram that we just draw here, drawn here, the stock 
which is ds by dt and uh, fractional grow a uh, net uh, inflow rate is nothing but g into s so at every point in time uh, i am adding g into s to the stock values right so if i want to actually simulate what i want to do is stock at time t plus dt is uh, okay minus say stock at time t is nothing but uh, uh, dt into net inflow at time t or stock at t plus time dt is stock at is a minus sign stock at time t plus dt into g into s which is again at time t. So, dt is your dt is the time step. If you are still using Euler's method, let us say time step of 1, then dt is simply 1. So, s at time t plus 1 is s at time t plus 1 into g into s of t. And to simulate this model, all you are going to do is keep solving this equation again and again. Right. So, if you want to do it manually, how will we go about doing it? First, let us say we have to initialize some value of stock. So, we so actually the behavior depends on the initial value of stock, right? Uh, behavior depends on initial value of stock at t equal to 0, right? Why does it behave? Why does it depend on that? The simple reason is stock value is 0, what will be the behavior? Will be nothing, it will be just the stock value will continue to be 0 forever because the initial value of stock is 0. So, if it is 0, then we can expect uh, no growth. If it is any value greater than 0, then we can expect exponential growth. The two possible behaviors are there. If it is again, assume g is greater than zero. As long as g is strictly positive, we are going to get a exponential growth. Of course, stock has to be non-zero for this to kick start. L system will uh, not uh, will exhibit no growth. So let's uh, use the diagram we just saw the underlying equations. So if you want to contextualize it this very focused example, assume you have put money in a bank and it is going to accumulate interest compounded interest every year for the next uh, say 15 years. So, this simple diagram here represents how the interest accumulates in a bank and though you may feel that bank is not giving you adequate interest and the money does not seem to grow the speed which you, which you may want it, but actually the growth is exhibits a exponential growth. To simulate it, so let us we will let us do a quick uh, hand simulation. Uh, we typically initialize the time at 0 and initialize stock at the initial value. Then see first the net flow is calculated based on the current value of stock. Then we add the increment that is delta t into the net inflow increment time. And then we add this whatever increment we calculated uh, to the stock. So, this time is not reached the end time, we keep looping. This may look uh, unnecessarily confusing, but what we want to do is uh, shown here. So, let us assume for that interest rate example, the initial value of stock is 100, right. So, first at time 0, the level is 100, then at time 0, so, up to this is what is given time 0 initial value of stock or level is given at 100. So, we calculate the rate this 15 uh, the value of g is taken as 15 the interest rate is taken as 15 percent. So, we take 0.15 into 100 which is 15 and uh, let us assume a time step of 1 the dt is equal to 1. So, 15 uh, into 1 is 15. 
So, the next time period we increment time period by 1, then level will be 115, 100 plus 15. Then we repeat the same step 115 into 0 0.15, 17.25. So, the next period we add 17.25. We add 17.25 to the stock. So, from this I calculate this, then I calculate this, then I add this to here, then from this I calculate this value 17.25. Of course, calculate the increment and add the increment. Oops, sorry to that. Right. So, I can see when you start with 100 with every time unit passing, I am adding an increment uh, value equal to interest rate multiplied by that current value of stock. Uh, I mean, we are assuming we are not uh, taking the money out. So, let us see what happens when we plot it. So, we started with 115, the value is now 813.75. So, it is easier to visualize. So, see this graph. So, this now it starts to exhibit a exponential growth. So, this is the principal value that is a stock value and this is the net interest income which is your net inflow rate which will also again exhibit this nothing net income is nothing but a constant multiplier of the stock. So, stock exhibits a exponential growth this is just a fraction of that it will also exhibit exponential growth uh, offset by the value of g which in case is 0.15. Let us see initially I started with 100 and then by the time it reached uh, 200 was 1, 2, 3, 4, around time period 5 it reached 200. Let us see, let us see how long 200 takes to double from 5 I start 1, 2, 3, 4, again around time period it reaches 400, that is double and from, so as you can see, so after 5 time period passed it doubled from 100 to 100. After another equal interval of same 5 time period pass, the, the current value of stock is 200 double to 400. Under the same equivalent amount of say another 5 time units pass, the stock value doubles to 800. So, with a constant, so interesting thing about this exponential system is there is a constant doubling time. That is after constant time unit passes, my stock value doubles in value which is the characteristic of such a exponential system. Uh, so, in this particular example it happens to be 5, 5 time period approximately, but we can actually compute this.